Hi everyone, I'm your Gaurav here and in this video I'll talk about the previous year coding question for the Accenture. But I know everybody is already aware about that Accenture is hiring this year, right, and you need to prepare. So today we will understand what kind of questions Accenture ask, one thing. Second thing is that how you can prepare and third thing is that what kind of questions they already asked in the previous years. And I have selected two questions and also I'll give you the reference to practice more. Okay, so let's begin with the lecture but I want to hear in the comment how's the energy. Do you feel confident? Right. Do you feel like you can crack the Accenture? But I, I'll say yes because once you'll say yes you, you'll start preparing. So start preparing, follow the guidance and you'll be in Accenture one day. Perfect. So now we will begin with our session. Here we have one problem statement which is problem statement or question. If that you're not able to understand then it's a problem statement otherwise it's a question. Simple. So now here Anyway, part of the joke, huh? So now here what I'm having is, here I'm having one function, name as difference of sum. Okay, which will receive basically two things, one is n, second is m, except two integers, n and m, as an argument. Okay, so means whenever somebody will call this function, they will pass two argument, n and m. Understood? Correct. Find the sum of all numbers in the range from 1 to m. Okay, so what we need to find, we need to find the sum of. So in, always remember, point out the few things which has been asked to you. So I need to get the sum, one thing for me. Now after that of all numbers and range from 1 to m, right, in this range. Okay, makes sense to me. Now again, both inclusive means both are included, right. They are not exclusive, they are inclusive. Now here that are not divisible by n. So all, also again important point, that are not divisible by n. Okay, return the difference between the sum of integers not divisible by. So now it's time that what kind of output I want to give. So return the difference between the sum of integers, sum of integers not divisible by n with sum of integers divisible by n. So what I need is that I need to find the sum of the integers which are divisible by n, one thing. Second thing, the sum of the integers which are not divisible by n. And then I'll get the difference and I'll print it. That's what the problem statement. And I hope this is clear to everybody. That you're able to get now, you're able to understand what kind of problem statement it is. Right. So now here we have, for example, n is 4 and m is 40, 20. So now the range will be 4 to 20, right? 4 to 20. Perfect. Now here the thing is, here just the thing is like sum of numbers divided by 4. That we need to figure it out, right? So here 4 will be itself because 4, 5, 6. This range you are having till 20. So who are divisible by 4? Obviously the multiple multiple of the 4s. So now here 4, 8, 12, 16, and 20. These are divisible by 4. Second, rest of the numbers are not divisible by this thing. We will say like by, uh, by 4, right? By 4. Perfect. And the range is 1 to m. 1 to m. Okay, so 1 to m. Means 1, 2, 3 till 20. Perfect. Now here, if I'll, if I'll ask if these are the numbers which are divisible by 4, then remaining numbers will be divisible by, not divisible by the 4, right? So now here we are having all these things. All these numbers are not divisible by 4. Perfect. So now here what I need to get, I need to get the difference of these two numbers which is 90 here. And that's what I need to figure it out. For example, here for this n is equal to 3 and m is equal to 10 also. So here I'm having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Perfect. And that's how I solve it. I guess everybody solves who are really good in the, in the programming or in the coding. Right. Now again, n is equal to 3, which means this is divisible. Perfect. Then who else? This is divisible. Who else? This is divisible. Then you'll get the sum of them. You'll get the sum of them. So 3 plus 6 plus 9, which becomes uh, 15, 18. And rest of them will not be the sum of this thing, right? Here. So you'll get the sum of the rest of the numbers. So this is 3. 3 and 4, 7, 7 and 5 are 12, and 12 is 7, 19, 19 and 8, 27, 37, and 37 minus 18. So you will have, what, you will have 19. And I hope now this problem statement is making sense to everybody. Right, now you are understanding this thing. The important thing is that how will you take the input, how you will get the output, that's what you, you have to figure out. So now here we are having one function. I'm writing a Java code here, you can have any code in any language like Java, Python or something. So now here I'm having this thing, I'm having one method which is difference of sum, where I'm receiving two parameters, m and n. Now the thing is, I will take these input from the user end. So look at this is a man, man method which I'm having here. Within the man method, I'm using a scanner class to take the input from the user end because I'm doing in Java. You can have in other ways as well. Again, okay, other languages like for the print in Python or C in C++, something like this, right? <coughs> 
perfect so now here i've taken n here i've taken m once i have the input i'll call my method which is difference by putting putting both the values right and once the value are available here i'll just you know bug start writing the logic so now here at initial i'm assuming like sum one will be zero and sum two will also be zero here i'll iterate from my i is equals to one till m right if that i means first time i will be born then i will be two then i will be three i will be four and because it's increasing every time right it's increasing every time from i plus plus so now here i'll come back i'll check is my i modulus of n means is my i divisible by n if that is yes then put in the sum one otherwise put into the sum two once you are having both the sum sum one and sum two get the difference if i'm using this math dot apps i don't want a negative value i want a positive value right the difference right and difference is never negative right negative can be something when you subtract subtraction and difference is the different thing okay so now here they're not static like you have to or uh, subtract uh, like sum two from the sum one that's not a thing right you just need to get a difference and difference can be difference will always be positive so now here i'm having this math dot s which will give you the absolute value means the positive value out of these differences and at then we will have our output i hope this solution is making sense but also if you are coding in other languages you will have an idea that you need to take an input you need to define a function or method where you will take the uh, you know two variables sum one and sum two then you get the sum of first which are divisible by n which are not divisible by n second thing right then get the differences of them with the absolute value and you will get your output making sense yes or no tell me making sense i know i can hard here you are saying yes perfect so now here the next problem statement it says you are required to implement the following function here def is for the python especially but you can have another language as well where you won't see this statement def so here we are having one thing large uh, small sum okay and they will have an array right, right here so the thing is the function accept an integer array size length okay as its argument you are required to return the sum of second largest sum of sum of what second largest second largest and second largest element from the even position and this would have a even position even position second thing and the second smallest second smallest sum one and sum two which is second smallest okay then here from the odd position so this will come from the odd position odd position so now i understood the problem statement odd position of given array now assumption all the array elements are unique one thing second treat the zeroth position as even not seven as even okay as even this was not a space it was as perfect so now here return zero if the array is empty in this case we have to return zero return zero if the array length is three or less than three right if it's a three or less than three in this case also we need to return uh zero okay perfect so now here now what we are having is we are having this array okay you need to take the even or odd position so this is even basically this 3 2 1 7 5 4 this is even this is even and this is even tell me in 3 1 5 who is the second largest you will say 3 correct second largest again from the odd position which is this 2 right which is 2 7 and 4 it's asking for the second smallest so is the second smallest which is 4 Which is four. Now you get the sum of three and four. It becomes seven. I hope now the problem statement is clear to you. What you need to figure out that you will have an array if that having a length less than three, you will put directly zero. Otherwise, what you will do is that you will try to find out the second largest, all right, from the even position, and uh, second smallest from the odd position. Perfect. And then you will get the sum of it. Perfect. So that's what the problem statement is, and we'll go here. We'll see the solution here right now. But I guess I haven't handled here. I, I should handle, and which you can handle here. I'll just give you the code here. Okay. So now here, what I'm doing is that I'm taking one size of the array from the user with the help of scanner class and the man method. After that, I'm just defining my array. I'm putting all the values together. So this is how I've I've taken my input. Okay. This is how I've taken my input. So now my input is ready. Now I'll call my method. Which is this thing? Now, once I've done this, once I've done this, I will check here. I will check here. You should put put a condition here somewhere on the top here, like if array dot length array dot length is less than or equals to three, I will just return. I will just return. You know what? Zero. After that, you can continue with here. Okay, and then it's a properly correct solution. So now here, the thing is, we are having the problem is like how will you identify? the second largest and the first smallest so there are multiple ways one way is that we perform a two pointer 
approach or, or maybe not to point out then directly we have to search it right and then we have to figure it out with the help of two variables that which is the second is smallest or second largest value right the another solution is that i can sort it by differentiating them i will have an another i will have one collection for example an array list where i put all the value which are coming on the odd position and another i will put all the value which are coming on the even position and then i will sort them i will sort them and then what i will do is what i will do is uh, basically i'll try to get uh, basically the first the second smallest and the second largest then i'll get a sum of it and that's what i've done here i'm having this array list right here right one array list and second array list one for the even second for the odd right and the thing is i'm putting my first value which is, that will definitely will go to the even right why even because zero index they were saying like it's the even thing now here what i will do i'll identify i'll iterate over my array all the even value i will put into my even array list all the odd value means odd places value i'll put in the, the odd array list then i will sort them collection dot sort they will sort it you can have a different way i told you the algorithm right with the help of a comparison you can, you can calculate it then once this is sorted in this case in this case what i will have is that i will get the sum of them sum of how because now in one array list which is even second largest means size minus 2 correct i'm getting one value again second smallest means the zero one index zero is the first one index is the second so second smallest value correct and that's how i'm getting both the value and getting the sum and once the sum i'm having i'll return here and that's what the accenture asked the questions but they can have the question on the various backgrounds for example normal mathematic calculations or maybe logics or, or maybe uh, from the array strings hash map hash set array list right or, or maybe from the uh, i'll say stack and queue but they rarely ask very complex questions they ask intermediate or easy level questions so you need to prefer in that way also i'll give you the references but here one thing who will give me the proper comments the top 3 comments top 3 comments like uh, somebody practiced good enough questions that are telling me yes sir i practice all all these questions these are the solution somewhere in this way or, or something creative right in this case team will review it and if you are really interesting person then they'll give you a 3 month uh, this access prime access for the prevention prime for free and what is the prevention prime that i will show you okay so basically it's nothing it's a netflix of the coders so you know what is the netflix age i know everybody knows already so now here i will search for the prevention prime prevention prime and now the thing is now the thing is here you will get all the course all together so if i'm searching a course for the accenture that let's say accenture is coming and i want to prepare for it so here you will have all, both the courses go here prepare for the accenture Okay, prepare for the extension and, and then continue. Perfect. Here, oh ho! I already logged in, but anyway, anyway, I'll just show you the course. It's asking me the password, but I really don't remember just now, or I will not put it. But here, I'll just show you the thing. It will go for the this course. Here, you will get the complete course. Okay, for the extension, where you will have coding, aptitude, verbal, and other things, which will help you to complete your preparation, right? And will increase your chance of getting placed, right? Perfect, yeah. Now then, now then, the question somebody can ask me that, sir, how will I get the previous year question papers? So go here, search for uh, previous uh, or coding questions, coding questions, Accenture to the Google. Here you'll get the professor dot com. So go here and practice all the coding questions. Also for the DSA purpose, that if you want the, sir, I'm not feeling that confident. Go and try out hundred. 150 not out prevents the questions these questions will help you to improve your logic now nobody can stop you while cracking a cognizant in coding especially okay and if you are having a course you are already ready with all the other things perfect here i hope you really enjoyed this entire video and thanks for watching this entire video i really appreciate this thing but only one thing i want your selection so remember to put the hard work there as well bye bye to all see you in the next lecture till then take care bye bye